Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday. Today, what we're going to dive into is writing Suricata rules, and specifically, we're going to talk through the basic format and structure, which is what you need to know to get started. So, hopping straight into it, Suricata rules have three major parts. There's the action that defines what happens when the rule actually matches. There's the header part, which defines the major sections of the rules. And then there's the options which allow you to re refine the behavior of the rule farther down to match very specific tra or traffic. Um, the format of Suricata rules are, you have your action first, you have your headers next, and you have your options and parentheses next. So let's look at an example of that. So here in this case, and this example rule came from the Suricata, um, from the documentation page, our action here is drop. And we'll talk through different actions, but the, um, what to know here, our action is drop. And then we have headers. And on these headers, right, we have the protocol, we have the source and destination IPs and ports, and then we have the direction. We'll dive into each of those later, but you're going to see those with every rule. And then down in the bottom in that blue box, you have the options. And this includes everything from metadata down to the specific bytes and bits that we're going to match in the rule. Um, and in this case, a regular expression. So again, format for the rules is, as we see here, that action in yellow, the headers in green, and those options in blue. But let's dive a little deeper into that. So the action section defines what happens when Suricata matches a rule. And you're going to see different behavior if you're in detection mode versus prevention mode. If you're in detection mode, a lot of times you might be off a span or tap port, um, but you're not in line to actually impede the flow of traffic to where if you're in prevention mode, you have the ability to stop the packet from getting to the destination, sending resets, um, and whatever else. So the, the action section matters um, depending on if you're in prevention or detection mode um, because the action is going to differ between the two. So. Starting with alert, if you set alert as the action, it's going to generate the alert and let the packet through if it's in prevention mode. Um, if it's in detection mode, it's just going to generate the alert. If you give a pass to your rule, um, you're not going to get alerting on this and the packet's going to go through. So again, if you're in prevention mode, um, this is what you'll use to say, hey, you know, this rule really just let the traffic go through. If you're in drop mode, it's going to generate the alert and it's going to try to actually drop the packet. Um, so no packet's going to be sent to the source or destination. Um, Suricata is just going to completely drop the packet um, and the receiver won't even know likely that a packet was even going there. Um, if you have reject mode, the reject modes, and we have four of them here, this is where Suricata is going to send resets or ICMP unreachables um, to either the sender or receiver, depending on the one you do. So if you use reject as the action um, or reject source, it's, you're going to get that reset sent to the sender. Um, so the receiver won't get it in this place, only the sender. If you use that reject dest, you're going to get that reset or ICMP error message to the receiver. Um, some receivers might not know what to do with this yet, right? Because they might not have seen the packet initially um, but depending on, again, the protocol being used and how that protocol works, um, you know, this might be something that the receiver actually expects. If you use reset both or reject both, you're going to get that error message both to the sender and receiver. Um, so if you're in IPS mode versus IDS mode, um, you know, if you're in IPS mode, there's a lot more options. If you're in IDS mode, you're probably going to be alerting or passing um, because a lot of the other options, again, you're not in line, you can't impede traffic, um, so it's going to be different. But sum it up, again, action section, tells Suricata what to do when the rule matches. So in this rule, again, um, we have drop in here. So this rule is going to drop the packet and generate the alert. Um, if you're just in detection mode, it's just going to generate the alert, right? But that's starting out there. So the header section is the next major section here. In the header section, we have four major um, sections that are going to, or subsections in this section. Um, the protocol is going to define the protocol rules that'll be applied to it. Your IP addresses, both on the um, source and destination side, here we have home net and external net. We'll talk about what those are here in a minute um, when we break down each part of this is. 
you have the ports or port ranges. So both the IPs and ports can be either single IPs, they can be ranges, or in this case, we have variables we'll talk about. And then the lighter blue in the middle, um, that's the traffic direction. Um, we'll talk about that more, but that defines the direction of traffic that the rule is going to look in. Um, so the header section of every rule, this is a very important section for you know defining the behavior that you're going to that Suricata is going to match traffic in. So starting out with the protocols, um, we have those what are called the basic protocols, right? Which is your TCP, UDP, ICMP, and IP. Um, these are very these are more commonly used. If you're in your OSI model, these are of course the lower layer of the OSI model. Um, but you can also do application layers. So if we look here, we have the common protocols like HTTP, FTP, SSH, RDP. Um, we even have some industrial protocols in there. So Modbus, DNP3, ENIP. Um, DNP3 is a popular protocol used in um, North American Power Grid. Um, it, you'll notice the asterisk by Modbus, DNP3, and ENIP. These actually have to be enabled in the um, Suricata config file to work. Um, but what this shows here is the protocol you use um, is the protocol you use can be everything from the application layer all the way down to your ICP, TCP, or IP, TCP, UDP to the low layer protocols. So um, the protocol you select can be on any layer. And we'll see that this protocol matters, especially when you get down into the rule set, because this will define some of the keywords you can use. But out of the box, these are the protocols that Suricata does support. So again, when we look at our rule, we're going to drop the packet and generate the alert we said, and we're going to do this for all TCP traffic coming through. So we're going to match with all TCP traffic um, going through. So hopping into that IP address section, your IP address, like we said, it could be a single IP. So it could be one, two, three, four in this case. It could be a whole side range. So you could say, if your home or office network's on the 192.168.0, subnet, you can give it 192.168.0.0 and then that 24 for the CIDR range. So you can give it CIDR ranges. You have home net and external nets. Um, and this is defined in your Suricata config. You'll see it in a lot of rules too. Um, home net is whatever subset of IP addresses is assigned in there. So if you're tailoring Suricata for your site, you're going to want to go in and set your home net and your external net. A lot of times external net in the config is just going to be all IPs that aren't in your home net. That's pretty standard when you look in the config. Um, but these are great variables and very common variables you'll see in Suricata rules. You can apply the negation operator in there. So like we said, a lot of times external net is not home net. If you do exclamation mark, um, and either the IP or that variable, um, that negates it and says everything except this. You can also group these. So the grouping operator, like you see, if you put it in square brackets, then it's going to match on everything home net and everything in that 192.168.0 slash 24 subnet. You can also use any um, if you want to match to any IP. Um, and this, um, this applies to both the source and the destination IP. So it works on both sides of this. The same logic works with ports, right? So you can match to a single port, you can match to any any port, you can match to a port range. So here we can do the uh, colon in between and 100 col or 100 colon 102 is going to match to 100, 101, 102. We can negate ports again. So if we say here exclamation point 80, this is going to be not everything that is in port 80. Um, and you can, with the grouping operator, you can get you know, more advanced sets here. So if we wanted to do 100 to 120, but not 101, this is going to do every port from 100 to 120, except port 101. Um, so you can get really fancy with these grouping operators um, and really add a lot of logic to these rules. So again, looking back at our sample rule, we're going to drop a packet and generate alert for TCP traffic from any port on the home network to any port on the external network. Um, we haven't covered directional, that's on the next slide, but hopefully this rule's making a little more sense to you as we're going through. So directional operator, you have two options. So you have a unidirectional match, and that's specifically from source to destination. Suricata doesn't have the other direction, so you can't 
you know, you can't do the other one. You have to change the logic of the rule um, to be unidirectional in the left to right syntax, but you can also do bidirectional. So when you talk about direction, it's generally going to be one of these two. So again, in this, we have, if we look at our rule, this is a unidirectional rule. So it's going to be from home net any port to external net any port, but it won't match in the other direction. It won't match from external to home. So that's a lot of those options. Now let's jump into the rules options section. This is the meat of this signature here. And these rule options are always contained in parentheses. Um, so the parentheses are always going to be there. These rule options might be binary or key value pairs. Um, so in this case, we have a lot of key value pairs. Um, I don't think we have any binary example, but you might have binary options in here. The rule option order matters. Um, so Suricata is going to go in order as you go through. Um, and the keywords here, so each of these key value pairs, the keywords used in that key field is going to depend on the protocol you select. So if you select uh, DNP3 and there's DNP3 in there, um, you can actually use those DNP3 protocols throughout it. Um, so yeah, let's hop into the next one. So breaking out this rule, then we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine different um, key and value pairs in here. Um, and we'll talk through what each of these are, but you can see if we break that option sections up, um, we have these nine key value pairs. Each of these key value pairs is either going to be metadata or it's going to define a matching action. So starting out with the message, this is the text information that's actually going to be in your log when the alert fires. Um, this message field, generally the convention, and it does say this in documentation, generally your convention is going to start in all caps. So here we have ET Trojan, that's emerging threat Trojans, and then you know, the um, description of what actually it does. But this is going to be the text description when the alert fires. Your flow is going to, um, is the next field, and establish to server. This is going to match on established connections going to the server. So again, as we're getting into what these options are doing, we're further honing down what this rule's looking at. And we can go even further, so fl flow bits, you see is set is proto IRC. So now we're going to look for IRC traffic now. Um, content, this is where we begin looking for um, string or byte values here. So we're going to look for um, Nick in this case. So that's the signature we're going to match specifically on there. The PCRE, this is what's called a Perl compatible regular expression. So with Nick, you know, we might tack our cap or we might uh, match on that. But with regular expressions, if we if there's going to be some variability or we don't know or there's a range of values that are here, we can use regular expressions. So here we're going to match on um, Nick, you're going to have USA, and then you're going to have three zero to nine digits um, in this and what it's matching against. So there's, again, variability, and you want to be careful and be smart with this variability because a lot of times when you're talking about IDS and IPS evasions, Attackers sometimes will figure out how your rules are written. And if you're looking for a very specific string, if they can just modify some of those strings or modify what's getting matched against on the attacker side, they might be able to get around your rules. So really being thoughtful with regular expressions can turn a decent rule into a really good rule that's hard for an attacker to get around. Um, so that's the Perl compatible regular expressions. Regular expressions can be tricky to learn if you don't know them, um, but once you do know them, they're super, super powerful. And then the last four values really are um, metadata values here. So you have things like references. This is a source you can look at to learn more information. So in this case, it's sending you to the emerging threats um, to the um, reference source for this specific rule. Class type, you can give this signature a classification. This helps you group signatures. It also might help you as you're going through logs, um, as you're analyzing them to look for signatures of a specific classification. You have your signature ID. All rules should have their own unique signature IDs in there. And then the revision of the signature. So this can help you again with version tracking uh, should you update signatures to know, hey, which version of 
you know, signature 2008 124 actually fired here. So putting together this rule, um, what we have is we have drop the packet and generate the alert. Um, we have four TCP traffic from any port on the home network to any port on the external network um, in that one directional. So it's unidirectional, it's not bi bi-directional. And we're matching established IRC connections to a server containing the string NIC, USA, and then three numbers at the end. The X's are actually going to be three zero to nine numbers at the end. Um, so again, hopefully this helped you understand the basics of Suricata rules to get you started. Um, they're not that complex to get going. They can get that complex when you really dig into keywords. Um, and so what I recommend next, if you're on your learning journey of learning Suricata, is really dig in and really begin to understand, you know, what are, what are some of the other keywords I can use? What are these some of the other protocol um, protocols that are supported and what values are pulled out? So if you look at like Suricata, if you look at uh, HTTP, right? You can do things with URIs, you can do things with user agents. Um, same with RDP and every other protocol. So as you take what you learned here, definitely go to that Suricata documentation and you know begin to think through some of the um, you know some of the specific rule logic you might write um, and pull pcaps down. Um, there are some good pcaps with scanning. We like uh, there's a pcap out there from a ICS conference in Sweden called S4 ICS um, that has some good. It has nmap in it. It has a, a few other scanners in there. Um, but you can take pcaps like that that you can find online and begin to write Suricata rules to maybe learn some of the keywords or play around with that. So. Thanks for joining in this or thanks for joining in this week and we hope to see you next week. Thanks a lot.